Gather round, boys, girls, and others, because it's time once again for Uncle Ben to tell you all about an upcoming video game release. When Gotham Knights was announced in 2020, comic book fans were overjoyed. The developers have promised a vast open world, RPG stylings, and the opportunity to experience a brand new story set in Batman's hometown of Gotham City. Before you go shelling out for that pre-order, though, there are a few things that you're going to want to know about the game. Trolling the internet for answers takes a ton of time, though, so we thought we'd do all of the legwork for you and pull together all of the facts into one handy dandy video. For this list, we've dug up every piece of information we can find on Gotham Knights so that we can answer all of the questions you might have about the game ahead of its release. Go on, ask us anything, we're basically experts at this point. Sorry, bat experts. Bat spurts? No, not that. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 things you need to know about Gotham Knights. Number 10. Which heroes can I play as? Unlike previous titles set in Gotham City, Gotham Knights players will not get to kick back in Wayne Manor, but will instead jump into the tight latex costumes of one of four characters, each of whom has previously partnered with Batman to dole out some vigilante justice. Dick Grayson has appeared in DC Comics since the 1940s and came into Batman's care after his parents were murdered by Mafia boss Tony Zuko. Grayson was the original Robin, but when he became older he retired the role instead assuming the persona of Nightwing. Barbara Gordon has been part of the Bat Universe since the 1960s. She originally partnered with Batman as Batgirl before being shot by the Joker, which cost her the use of her legs, so she then became Oracle. She underwent surgery in the 2010s though and was able to take up the Batgirl mantle once more. After Dick Grayson eschewed the role and his successor ended up dead at the hands of the Joker, Tim Drake became Robin, asserting that Batman needs a Robin. He's not wrong. And finally, Jason Todd may have been murdered by the Joker, but everyone knows that death means basically nothing in comic books, so following his resurrection in the mid-2000s, Todd was free to take up the persona of anti-hero Red Hood. Oh, I think that's everyone. Number 9. I get to hang out with Batman, right? I've got some bad news for you, I'm afraid. Sadly, Batman won't be appearing in Gotham Knights as he's decided to go live on a farm. Gone off to the great Batcave in the sky, shuffled off his mortal coil. He's dead, is what I'm getting at. Oh, and while we're at it, Commissioner Gordon, also dead. At the moment, it isn't clear exactly how Gotham's two main pillars of justice have come to pass, but we're sure that the game will clear that matter up. What we do know is that without the threat of a swift batarangging, the wrong ends of Gotham now feel they can do whatever they fancy. Fred not though, dear viewer, because there are still going to be plenty of familiar faces to catch up with all around the city. Players linked to the GCPD will seemingly be maintained by Rene Montoya, a recurring character in several DC storylines, and just about the only decent cop left in the city. Additionally, Bruce Wayne's faithful butler, Al Alfred Pennyworth is set to make an appearance, providing tactical support to the team in much the same way as Oracle in the Arkham series. Besides, who needs Batman when you've got Alfred? Number 8. What cool abilities does each character have? It's been confirmed by the devs that each of the four characters will have their own distinct abilities and skill trees, though many of the specifics are yet to be confirmed as the studio is playing those particular cards fairly close to its chest. In an interview with GamesRadar, creative director Patrick Redding revealed that players can expect each character's skills to be derived from Batmans, which makes sense as they are all trained under the Caped Crusader. Being very different people with different experiences, though, they will have their own specialities and put their own spin on proceedings. Redding has also revealed more information about Nightwing's arm Arsenal in a recent Discord Q&A. From what we gather, many of Nightwing's weapons and gadgets have been stolen from Bruce Wayne, literally. According to Redding, the team wanted to make it seem like Nightwing had raided the Batcave, which I suppose answers the question of what happened to all of Batman's cool stuff when he died. Red Hood's resurrection will also be reflected in his abilities. As he confronts the trauma of dying and being brought back, he'll be able to tap into his lost powers and reinvent himself as a hero after being an anti-hero for so long. It has also recently been revealed that while levelling up their chosen character, players will accrue additional skill points to spend on the other heroes, so no one gets left out. Finally, the player character will ultimately be able to embrace knighthood, unlocking associated special skills in the process as they come to understand what it means to become the Dark Knight. Number 7. What's the story? Naturally, developer WB Games Montreal haven't revealed tons of details about the plot, but they have given players some idea of what to expect from Gotham Knight's story. As we've already mentioned, the game is set after the deaths of both Batman and Commissioner Gordon. With a corrupt police force and no vigilante justice, Gotham has become a hotbed of crime and villainy. Luckily, not all who remain are willing to stand for such nonsense, and after receiving a recorded message from Batman, the Gotham Knights endeavour to continue his legacy by kicking some bad guy butt. Punching endless waves of mindless goons doesn't make for a very 
interesting game though, certainly not after the first few minutes, so Gotham Knights is going to need a big bad. Enter the Court of Owls, a secret organization first introduced in the New 52 comics. We don't know exactly what the group has planned, but we do know that they're mighty powerful and control Gotham City from the shadows. We also know that, in the comics at least, Dick Grayson was once a member of the Owls and that his family connection to the organization goes back decades. We're sure nothing bad will come of that though. Number 6. Do I get to beat up my favourite Batman villains? Of course you do! The Court of Owls might well be the big bad of Gotham Knights, but it just wouldn't be a Batman-adjacent game without some recognisable evil faces now, would it? It was confirmed that Mr Freeze will be making an appearance after he was shown in gameplay footage as one of Gotham Knights' boss battles. Freeze has been appearing in comics since the 1950s as well as in movies, TV shows, and of course, video games, causing havoc by lowering the temperature and spouting puns. Actually, the second thing is just Arnold Schwarzenegger's Freeze, but we wouldn't say no to a few puns in Gotham Knights, please or rather freeze. The Court of Owls story trailer also revealed the inclusion of Penguin on the game's roster of wrongons. He can be seen assuring Nightwing that not only is the Court of Owls very much real, but that they're also always watching and always listening. It was also announced at Gamescom that the game will feature Harley Quinn and Clayface, both of whom have been given a special makeover Gotham Knights style. We can't imagine that the game will stick to just a handful of infamous faces though, and we're excited to see who else shows up to terrorise Gotham City. Number 5. Where will the knights hang out when they're not fighting baddies? If you're a ragtag gang of crime-fighting vigilantes, then you can't just hang out in any old dump. Sadly, the Batcave is out of commission, what with the whole, you know, dead Batman thing, and the local Starbucks just isn't going to cut it. Yes, they've got free Wi-Fi, but they do expect you to keep buying coffee and have daft policies about how much bad guy blood you're allowed to track into the place. Yes, I know I'm covered in blood, but if you just get me my Frappuccino, I'll be on my way! Fortunately, the gang doesn't have to trawl through Zoopla for hours on end to find new digs as they've got The Belfry, a gothic bell tower in the heart of Gotham City. Indeed, our masked vigilantes will only be undertaking their crime-fighting capers at night, so during the day they must head back to the Belfry to rest, regroup and strategize. From a gameplay perspective, the Belfry will be the player's home hub, where they'll be able to switch characters if they so wish and manage their progression. Once they're done, all they need to do is head back out into the city, fast-forwarding to nighttime in the process and get back to serving that that sweet, sweet justice. Number 4. What's the gameplay going to be like? Gotham Knights is being touted as an action RPG, which means that we can probably expect some elements to be carried over from the Arkham series. With that said, it sounds like there will be a number of gameplay mechanics that are brand new. Executive producer Fleur Marty has confirmed that the combat system has been redesigned from the ground up, so it's likely that it's going to be quite different to the system in Arkham Origins. She assured players that Gotham Knights is still a brawler though, and that the new combat mechanics will very much be geared towards that, but that they'll also be tailored for the game's drop-in, drop-out co-op system. More on that in a moment. Being an RPG also means that players will be able to level up their characters, unlocking new and exciting powers and abilities along the way. Players can also expect lots of exploration, and will be able to freely roam Gotham City to find all of its hidden secrets. Don't worry about having to catch the subway either, as there will be plenty of vehicles such as the Bat Cycle that the players can use to get themselves from A to B. And then it says here, vroom vroom. That's the noise that it will make. Number 3. Can I play with my friends? Yes, you absolutely can, but more importantly, you don't have to. Developer WB Games Montreal has created a seamless drop-in, drop-out co-op system for Gotham Knights, which means that a second player will be able to get in on the action without interrupting the game. Players will be able to jump into their mates' games, help them out on a few missions, and then jump out again without ever causing their host an ounce of trouble. It's bad news for you couch co-op fans, though, as the multiplayer in Gotham Knights is set to be online only. But what if you don't want your pals dropping in on you and cramping your style? Well, we understand that although the studio has spent a great deal of time on its multiplayer system and ensuring that all of Gotham Knight's combat encounters are nicely balanced, they've also put a great deal of thought into the single player side of things as well. Put simply, the developer is doing all they can to ensure that every player can have a good time with Gotham Knights, regardless of whether they want to play it with a friend or enjoy the experience by themselves. Number 2. I have cash to burn, are there going to be special editions? To that I say, do bears poop in the woods? 
Of course, there are going to be special editions and each of them comes with a bunch of cool perks. If you're not worried about any add-ons, then the standard edition of the game will be available on consoles and PC. Those who pre-order any version of the game will be treated to a very cool 233 custom skin for the Bat Cycle so that they can cruise around Gotham City in style. If you feel like splashing out an extra 20 quid, you can treat yourself to the Deluxe Edition, which comes with a copy of the base game plus a bunch of exclusive gear and cosmetics as well as the Beyond Suit style character skins which are inspired by the Batman Beyond animated series. Very swanky. Anyone who's feeling really flush, and we're talking almost £300 of disposable income flush, can get their hands on the Gotham Knights Collector's Edition. Naturally, this also gets you the base game and a number of digital items, including the Beyond suit style skins, but it also comes with a map of Gotham City, a 16 page media book, a collectible pin, and a statue of the four heroes. Hmm, maybe I can afford it if I live on ramen this month. Number 1. I'm very excited about this game. When and where can I play it, please? At the time of writing, Gotham Knights is due to release on October 21st, 2022. However, it's worth noting that the game was originally supposed to release back in 2021 but was delayed by the developer. In a statement on the Gotham Knights official Twitter account, Warner Bros said that they were giving the game more time to deliver the best possible experience for players. Hopefully, the postponement of the release will mean a better quality game and less crunch for the developers, and if that is the case, then we are all for it. The delay to Gotham Knights release hasn't come without its casualties, though, as the studio has taken the decision to cancel the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 versions of the game, again stating that they wish to provide players with the best possible gameplay experience. Sadly, this means that anyone without a decent gaming PC or current-gen console won't be able to get in on the action. What we're hoping this implies is that what the studio is aiming to achieve just can't be supported by the previous generation, and if that's the case, then Xbox Series, PlayStation 5 and PC players are going to be in for a real treat. 